Hey guys, welcome back for our restoration project. Today we're going to begin restoration on our front seats. So there's a couple different ways we can go about reupholstering our seats and uh, rebuilding them. One way would be to repack the original cores, uh, stretch our new seat covers over that, and that's really not a bad option. You can see we're actually in pretty good shape here. And this is how we did the uh, back seats and they turned out really nice. The other option is to uh, peel this away and go with a foam injection core, which is what we're going to do on this video. Um, we're going to try to do it. I'm not sure how it's going to turn out. Uh, if we're having problems with it, it's not turning out like we want. We're not able to get where we want to get with it. We're going to go back to the original and uh, pad that up and stretch over that. So it'll be kind of interesting to see how this all turns out. So first, let's take a close-up look and see exactly what the inside of these seats look like. Take a look at the inside of our covers here. Really, really interested to see exactly how they did it back in 1967. So this is going to be our passenger side seat back. And as you can see, they basically use the same materials as they did in the back seating here. Got some burlap stretch over there. And all this is really still in very good shape. Um, looks like we got some steel in there. Be interesting to see what's behind that once we get this all peeled away. And uh, flipping this over here. So our centers here are not quite as tight as our back seating. And that could be a couple reasons for that. Uh, one reason could be um, a little bit looser just for, for comfort, or it could just be uh, just a lot more wear in that area. But it does not feel as dense as our back seats were packed. And this basically just mounts to the inside there. We got some slats in there. And then everything nails off, uh, kind of like our back seats with some nails into a wooden frame there. And then our passenger side seat bottom, this is really interesting to look at. You can see how they put all that together there. So our uh, steel spring set, really in nice condition. Um, very light surface rest on there, but nothing really too bad. Okay, so putting a game plan together then and how we're gonna go about this, because uh, I gotta do video on it and I have to work out all the details on these and figure out exactly how to get this like we want it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this passenger seat complete. I'm going to strip this down and recover it and rebuild it 100% uh, to where I like it. Uh, once I think we got something that's going to work, then we'll take a close-up look at it. And uh, for this video then, what we'll do is we'll take the seat back and we'll break it down step by step and complete that one. Okay, so we managed to get through one seat complete using our injection foam and I think that's going to work out fine for us. Uh, let's take a look at our bird's eye view here comparing the original. You can see it's just kind of deflated looking, kind of indented and crushed compared to our new injection molded uh, stretch wrap there. So good definition in the new one and uh, a little bit just worn out looking. Although this original really isn't in too bad a shape. And then looking at the seat back also, uh, comparing it to our injection molded new wrap there versus the original. You can see there's quite a bit of uh, irregularity in the original and just really worn out over time. And then looking at the front edge of our original here, really not too bad. It's in pretty good shape, but uh, definitely needs redoing. And then compared to our freshly rewrapped and reconditioned framework with our injection molded, there's really just no comparison there. And then looking at our seat back here from the bottom side, so you can see that uh, tack line there, so they just use tacks to pull and stretch that. We're going to do the same technique there. And then also if I pan back here, you can see the original is just really distorted and kind of pressed out to one side compared to our freshly uh, wrapped injection molded seat here. All right, let's flip these over and take a look at the back side. And then back to our bird's eye view, seems to give us the best shot here to kind of compare what's going on original there and our freshly stretched out new seat back. And then looking at our seat pans here, so what we're doing is just stripping off the old finish uh, sandblasting POR15 and then on our seat rails uh, rather than to replate those, I'm leaving those in place and just working around them. Uh, that way I can retain the original rivet system which is really strong and uh, just polishing them up and they seem to come up plenty good to reuse them in place and then uh, comparing to our original here uh, not too bad but you can see we definitely need to freshen her up a bit could sand it down and paint it but it's really just best to strip it all off and give it a good protective coating 
Okay, so from here, I'm going to go ahead and strip down this other seat back and bottom complete. Uh, do some sandblasting, some POR 15. And I think at that point, it's a, uh, we can jump back in there and start the rebuild. So for the remainder of this video, we're just going to concentrate on this one once we uh, get our framework all cut up there. And then we'll go to uh, another video to wrap this one up as uh, this one's quite involved also. So that should give you a real good idea what's involved in these seats. So the first set really, uh, about seven days to get through those complete, stripping them down, doing all the prep work and working out all the bugs. So hopefully these go a little bit faster, uh, but it is quite a bit of work involved to restore these seats. Okay, so we got our framework all prepped and ready to go here. Uh, so our next step is going to be to wrap our burlap. And uh, we'll just take a quick overview here and see what all the different components are uh, required to make the burlap work. Let me put a couple pictures in here and uh, you can see exactly what the factory configuration was before we dismantled here. Um, and that's the configuration that we're going to be getting back to. So here's all the different fasteners we're going to be using. These are all originals, just cleaned up. Uh, we're going to be using some new rubber O-rings. Um, and you can see here from the originals, these are a little bit stretched out. Uh, so those definitely need replacing. Um, our lumbar strap slash supports here, these are in real good condition. It's almost like a siliconized rubber, um, so they stayed in pretty good shape. A little bit of residual glue there from the... Uh, factory install and uh, and then just our framework so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at those pictures and then we'll get started okay so you can kind of see uh, by those pictures where we need to go with this so one modification that needs to be done before we start covering things up and uh, losing access to the inside of our framework. So here is where our headrest bracket mounts to the framework. You can see here, I've uh, added a nut to the backside and re-threaded down through the sheet metal. So from the factory, um, all they did was put a sheet metal screw into this uh, sheet metal here, and that was gonna hold on the uh, chrome bracket and then also be able to take up for the leverage on the headrest, but unfortunately, uh, that proved to be a very weak design and uh, not very effective. What's going to happen is uh, eventually your screws are going to loosen up or pull out of there, um, and then you're kind of stuck with a big hole and no way to really refasten your headrest bracket. So what I did is I took uh, some nuts and uh, I stripped the zinc coating off of it and uh, grinded them up real good so we had good bare metal. To metal and I tried brazing these uh, with uh, various sorts of brazing materials and I just couldn't have any luck in there in that too tight of a space so ended up uh, JB welding those in place uh, that should be strong enough to get our screw started in there once we torque down on our screws and get everything and get everything pulled together uh, then that should give us a little bit more threading room for strength when we put our headrests on that's one weak area of this backrest and then our bottom cleat here, this was just stripped of all the uh, metal fasteners in it, sanded up and resealed, and then screwed from the inside. And then our burlap kit was supplied by Sierra Madre. They have a real nice kit you can buy. Uh, one kit does both driver and passenger side. It does both the seat backs and the seat bottoms. Uh, so a real nice kit there. The only modification I'm making to the uh, kit out of the box is going to be this pull cord here. So I'm just going to replace this with an eighth inch nylon cord. Um, some basic cord there and uh, run that through the inside. Once we pull that through there, it'll make a lot more sense. And then just centering everything up on our framework. So this is going to wrap over like this, like so. Just making sure we're centered. And then one trick you can use with nylon cord, because it does like to undo itself, just bleed some super glue down into the knot that will fuse everything together. 
and prevent it from ever backing out. Being careful not to overstretch that when we're doing our uh, stapling on the rear. We are going to wet this and uh, stretch it naturally. And then just trim off any extra. Okay, then the next step, now that we're all fastened off and everything's tied, uh, we're going to wet both sides with a squirt bottle, uh, really wet, and then I'm going to stick it outside in the sun for about an hour, and that should shrink it and tighten everything up to a nice, tight, snug fit. All right, I think we're all tightened up, ready to go here. Let's take a look at that. You can see the spring in that, almost like a drum. Getting good definition in there now. Okay, let's bring it inside and put the webbing on. So first we'll install our lumbar straps. So we're just going to find the holes in the frame here. Best way to do that is with an awl. Like that. And then next we'll have to arrange our O-ring configuration with the various fasteners. Let's take a look at those. So we'll have a double, which will go underneath in the vertical positions there. We'll have a single, uh, what do we call it, like a pattern here. we got a two pattern here, a single pattern here. Single pattern will be on top in the middle and then the opens will be the ends and they'll wrap around the cord. So I like starting with the center first and then dividing the other two equally. Just hook those on there like that. Well, that looks like that's going to work. So next we're going to take uh, some screws and we're going to just plug some holes using an awl. We're going to find the seat hinge holes and uh, just put a screw in there just to plug it so we don't get any contact cement in there. And then we're going to slurry the outside in uh, select areas with contact cement. We have all our threaded holes plugged and uh, I'm just brushing this out with a spray grade contact. It's real thin and the whole purpose of this is basically to adhere the burlap to the frame uh, so it doesn't slip and move around on us when we're working with it and also it'll toughen it up but we got to be real careful where we're putting it so we want it on the frame but we don't want it in the middle this area here we'll definitely uh, telegraph through to our upholstery and just bleed it right through just soak it but we're not going to get any glue on the bull nose here because we'll need that smooth to stretch our upholstery over that edge. Okay, so we're basically dry to touch. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna let this solidify for about an hour. Um, once it's firm enough to where I think we can work with it, then I'm just gonna take some rubber gloves and palm it down. Just basically press it in and conform it to shape all the way around. And then one last look here before we cover it with our foam. So that'll be the hardware configuration for the headrests. And then we'll cut out here for our seat hinges. And then also, it doesn't hurt to put a little slurry of contact cement on the burlap uh, where our hooks go into the cord area there. That'll help from uh, helping our burlap undoing over time. We've got quite a bit of pressure pulling on it. All right, and then from here, we're going to move on to our injection molded foam. So what I'm doing is I'm just slipping in the uh, backrest into the foam and centering it up. You can see I've got a tape line there. I'm going to trim some of the excess foam off the top edge there. And then taking a look at the bottom here as we draw up, you can see we'll be close to the bottom in the center, but we'll be a little bit overhanging there. So we'll also trim that uh, once we get it stuck. So all I'm going to do is contact this area here, pull it up to the center, and that's all that's going to hold our injection molded foam for the time being. All right, and then let's just take a quick look at this chrome uh, flange detail here and see exactly what I'm doing. So I'm taking a, a nut and surrounding the screw 
that we're going to use to cinch down our chrome bracket. And the whole idea of that nut surrounding that screw is when I pull that screw out of there um, and run it through the outside, what's going to happen is it's going to draw this chrome flange down until it bottoms out on the nut, and that's going to give it some backing. If I didn't have that nut there and that space, this thing would draw too far down and uh, it could possibly tear our upholstery. So all that nut is for really is just a shim and some backing. And then just a quick look at our contact surface area. So in about four to five inches and then out to the edge there is about all we need to stick it. Okay, and then moving on to our seat back cover. So before we slide this over, we need to do just a couple little things. Uh, one of those things is going to be to contact cement this large seamed area uh, on the outside left and right. Um, we want to just glue these together so that they're nice and tight. And uh, they'll sit properly then down inside this pleat here, uh, which we'll glue later. And then the other thing is that if there's too much excessive tail on your outer seams, I like to trim mine back as tight as I can, uh, being careful not to breach any of the stitching. So that's there for strength. If you have too much tail coming up off of here, um, it will definitely affect how it wraps and pulls on that outside edge. So we're almost ready to slide our seat cover over the seat back. Um, you can see we got our seams glued there, that one there, and that one looks nice and tight. Uh, we got our outside edges trimmed. And then I'm using a large trash bag to uh, encase our injection molded foam. And the reason I'm doing this is uh, this is going to help uh, get two materials to slide against each other. If I didn't have this plastic to slide against, then what would happen? Uh, this would just hang up uh, part way down as we're trying to pull it and we end up tearing it. So that's going to help slide that over. And then in the top of it, I'm putting uh, a couple slits. And what that's going to do, uh, once we get the seat cover pulled over the trash bag, then we're going to need to pull the trash bag out from inside the seat cover. Uh, that's going to help it tear away and break away a little bit easier for us. So let's go ahead and uh, get this seat cover out in the sun for 20 minutes, warm it up, and then see if we can press it on there. Well, sliding this over that foam, you can see it's just a real wrestling match, but I really don't know of any other way to get there without using some kind of plastic slip sheet. Okay, so then next what we want to do, and this would be optional, is on this seam here, this outside seam here, and this one here, if you can reach your hand up on the inside all the way back to here and contact cement the foam and then the back side of this pleat here, if you can get contact in there, if we can show it, um, and have to let it dry and be careful not to make any contact while it's drying, uh, what you'll be able to get is a real nice definition as this rolls over and tucks because you can see, you see a lot of spring in there. If we were to just pull it, um, you'd have a nice edge on there, but if you can stick it down and keep it stuck and pull it, you're going to get a real nice edge. Uh, but it is optional and very difficult. If it doesn't work out, it could backfire on you and you can end up uh, with some areas in here that are stuck and other areas that are not stuck. So that's a downside.
And then our last detail here, so we just want to find our screws for our seat headrest. And so what we do is we just press down the upholstery until we're about centered, poke a hole in it with an awl, and then take a small Phillips screwdriver and back it out. And that's pretty much how those are going to situate on the back side. Um, so before we set our headrest, when we do our final insulation inside the car, I'm going to pull these screws one last time, uh, buff the heads on a buffing wheel. They're stainless steel. They should come up real nice. And then run them in one last time for the final set. And then a final look together side by side with a bird's eye view. And then looking at our backside here, you can see everything stretched and pulled real tight over our injection molded foam. Uh, these kits are from Autos International, uh, but the injection foam is uh, something I sourced off of eBay quite some time ago. And then look at our bottom edge detail with the tacks in there. So overall, very happy with the way these turned out. There's definitely uh, plenty of padding, plenty of support uh, for years to come there. Um, one advantage to doing these uh, seat backs, if you're doing it yourself, is going to be picking a very warm, hot day to do it in. Um, and if you can stand working outside, it's going to be a big advantage. That injection mold is going to make it real tight, getting this uh, seat cover over the top of it. But uh, if you can get it over there, keep it nice and supple, everything's going to stretch out and turn out just the way you want. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on part two.